Hi, I'm Sharon Green from Abarta Heritage and today we're visiting Killerhurt Ringfort in County Leitrim. Ringforts are enclosures that date to the early medieval period in Ireland, this one probably from about the 8th century, and they are essentially farmsteads or homesteads which are the most common type of monument actually found on the island of Ireland. They estimate there's over 40,000 of them of their work. Um, these monuments consist generally of a circular or subcircular enclosure with a bank and an outer ditch that were somewhat defensive, but that was not their main role despite the name. These, as I said, were farmsteads. Um, you would have had an extended family probably living inside, uh, one or more houses depending on the size of the monument, and they would have tended to their animals, they would have had crops in the fields outside. So as I said, they can be different sizes. Some of the smaller ones could be less than 20 metres in diameter, but you can get very large ones that could be 30 or more metres in diameter. Um, some have a single bank and ditch, some will have multiple banks and ditches, and this will express the status, I suppose, of the family or the, the perhaps the lord or even king that, that lived on the site. This one here has two very large banks with a big ditch in between. It's also located right up on a hilltop, and now it might be overgrown with trees, but back in the early medieval period, they would have been able to look over a large range of land and even see other important settlements on other hilltops surrounding. Hello, my name is Rob Shaw. I'm the survey manager at the Discovery Programme, an archaeological research company funded by the Heritage Council based in Dublin. Today I'm on site in Killahark, uh, working on a landscape project, looking at the, the landscape setting of a ring fort. What I'm doing, my job as survey manager, is to bring one of the techniques we call remote sensing to the site, which is using UAV, or more commonly known as a drone, to create very high resolution, accurate mapping of the site. So this is the drone that we're going to use, or we've been using on site, it's a DJI Phantom, and we programmed this drone to fly a set course over the ring force itself and the wider landscape, and it takes a series of overlapping images. And with careful processing of those images and using GNSS to give us ground control, using targets in the photographs, we're able to produce two really important, valuable assets for the further the examination of the landscape. So that's, we create an ortho image, which is a geometrically corrected photograph of the landscape, very high resolution, down to about two centimeters ground resolution, incredibly fine detail can be seen on that. And we also produce a digital elevation model. A digital elevation model might allow us to see hidden features in the landscape. So it could be very subtle banks or ditches that we don't see as we walk across the landscape. But by having this digital elevation model and using GIS techniques, we're able to tease out and perhaps find things which we couldn't formally see. So a really important part for me as a surveyor is to make sure all of this fits accurately into a survey framework. And in Ireland, that survey framework is the Irish Transverse Mercator ITM uh, grid system. So all the work that I do and my colleagues do is all put together and made sure that it fits to that system by using the GNSS receiver here that I have on my left. So it's a very integral part of the work that we're doing. So it's very important that at the end of the day, everything fits together. So if we find things by one technique, we can test that against the other techniques that we've used and see whether perhaps something which we're finding under the surface has surface evidence on the ortho image. Hi, I'm Susan Curran with the Discovery Programme and I'm here with our survey team at um, this fabulous ring fort in Killahark in County Leitrim and we're here this week to do some geophysical survey. So geophysical survey is um, a technology that looks beneath the surface so we can see from the ring fort we've huge upstanding banks and really deep ditches but there's going to be more um, features in archaeology potentially that lie beneath the surface. So we have two inv non-invasive technologies that we're going to use to explore basically what lies under the surface. Um, on my right here we have um, a magnetometer or gradiometer. So this does a magnetic survey. So it's looking for anything beneath the ground that might have a magnetic response. So things like ditches or pits um, and also um, burnt material. So possibly the remains of a hearth um, and in terms of ditches and pits, you might have a lot of enclosures and residences in the past would have been defined by big ditches um, or even foundation trenches that post and mortal walls might have gone in. 
pits for storage or for um, cooking um, and various things. So the magnetometer is really great at finding those types of features. But not everything can be found by a magnetometer. So we often complement the technique with electrical resistance survey. So this uses a magnetic current. So it basically sends a magnetic current beneath the ground and it measures the resistance to that current. So things like that are made of stone, stone walls, stone kists, other kind of stone features, maybe a stone floor that would have a high resistance to an electrical current. Whereas looser soil within a ditch, for example, or a pit would have a low resistance. The current would pass more freely through that. So by looking at these anomalies um, and the readings, we can start to identify different features that might lie below the ground surface. The techniques work in different ways as well. You know, the resistance survey is quite slow. Um, it takes a lot of time. So we generally try and do this in a smaller area. So for example, the interior of the ring fort is an ideal location for a resistance survey. It's a small defined area. And we might find things like a stone lined hearth, for example, could show up on the resistance or maybe um, post holes that might be lined with stone could also show up. The magnetometer is a much quicker type of survey, so you can cover a lot more ground. Uh, this is a handheld magnetometer, but we also have a cart which can cover even more ground even quicker. Um, but again, we'll use that within the ring fort interior as well as outside of the ring fort to try and identify any complementary features that might not show up on the resistance survey. So I'm Neil Jackman from Abata Heritage. and. We were contracted by Leitrim County Council to take a look at this site here at Killerhurg, which is a very sizable, very impressive ring fort, with a view to do what we'd call a heritage audit, to see if the site is the kind of place that might in the future perhaps become more accessible in terms of visitors or people coming to see it, and whether it has any kind of conservation needs that we'd like to recommend. So there's a few things when we're doing these heritage audits that we always take into account. Firstly, it goes without saying, you've got to have the landowner's permission. They have to be really supportive and interested. And they also have to ideally have some community interest in the site as well. Because when you're looking at a big monument like this, there's so many different layers to making it presentable for visitors, for example. One of the important things you must look at as well is the idea of kind of sustainable tourism and sustainable heritage tourism in particular. When you're looking at a site like this, is it good for visitors to come to it? Or do they somehow put the site at risk? Would erosion from footfall damage the big outer banks, for example? Or do the people themselves become at risk from, you know, getting stuck in the ditch or whatever it happens to be? Is it good for people and is it good for the monument itself? You have to take those kind of things into consideration. And sometimes that means you're looking at ways to perhaps, uh, you know, modify the threat if there is any potential threat. So you might look to put in say a wooden walkway or something like that to take the pressure off the actual site itself. And a heritage site like this is heritage in the broad sense. It's not just the archaeological and built heritage here. It's the incredible natural heritage that you can see all around you. There's all the orchids behind me. There's lots of different types of wildflower around here as well. You have all the trees. You have fantastic insect life and the birds and things like that as well. So one of the things we always look to do is to recommend that an ecologist comes and looks at the site as well. And again, you want to have as little impact as possible, while at the same time creating opportunities for people to come and enjoy and to see and to learn about some of the, the creatures and plants and the animals that make this their home. So all in all, when you're doing a heritage audit, there's quite a lot to consider and uh, not just how important is the site archaeologically, though that certainly fits into it as well. In the future, when you're looking at tourism and things, you have to consider how well does it fit in with the overall story of this part of Leitrim, for example. Is there a way to connect it to other monuments nearby? Is there a way to connect it to the bigger story of, say, Carrigallon, the local settlement nearby as well? So you're looking for all these different opportunities and you're trying to look for, I suppose, in a very kind of rounded sense of what this monument is and how special it is and how do we protect it, promote it and preserve it for future generations.